Hi, welcome to my train room. I'm Rainer. A few weeks ago when I was planning this uh, layout in this whole room, this train layout, I was looking and drawing, well on the computer program, drawing out my rail yard and one of the things that I wanted to do was to include a turntable in the yard because the lower deck of my layout is not a continuous loop. It's a it starts at one end, runs through this helix, and then runs up to the other upper deck. Now there is a loop where they can run around on the upper deck, and there is a turnaround loop planned at the top level up here. I haven't built it yet, but on the lower level, there's no way to get locomotives to actually turn around. And for the diesels, that's not a big deal. But for the steam locomotives, I realized I needed to have a turntable. Now, I have this old Atlas turntable from, I don't know how young I was when my dad bought it for me. It was originally a manual turntable with a little crank on it. And then eventually he bought me this motor kit. And there is a little house that covers the motor. And the last I tried this a couple of years ago, it still worked fine. It's noisy as all of these Atlas turntables are. And crunches away and you know it's got brass rails in it not nickel silver but that's okay it still works so I was originally thinking of putting this on the layout and that's what I was kind of planning around but then I realized that that really didn't make a whole lot of sense because as I mentioned in an earlier video um, I have four steam locomotives currently that I'm planning on running on the layout and of those four only one of them would actually just barely fit on this thing because it's just not long enough. So I decided to get online and started looking for options. Now I didn't want to spend a lot of money. I mean that, that one because I've owned it forever it's free. So instead I ended up ordering one of these. It's a Walters 90 foot turntable. Um, it's just a manual one. There's no motor in it. You can get a motor kit separately, but that's fine with me. Where it's going to be is going to be very easy to reach, and I don't mind the manual one for the cost. It's just fine. Plus, I was reading online, a lot of people have had, I guess, issues getting the motorized ones working exactly perfectly. Not that I'm really worried about it, but it was mainly just the cost. I didn't want to spend too much money on it. So I ordered that. So I ended up picking this up, uh, ordering it online from the train exchange. It's a uh, model railroad supplier out in Edmonton, Alberta. And uh, they had it for a very reasonable price and they shipped it to me very quickly. So thank you for that. I have so far at this point, all I've done is pulled the box open and um, just opened up the bag because everything was in a bag and I pulled out the main bottom tray and well if you see in my earlier video I did a search online to see what the diameter of this thing is supposed to be so that I could cut the hole in my layout at the time because I figured uh, it would be, be easier to cut the hole with the jigsaw before I had tracks all running all the way around it as it turns out that wouldn't have been an issue because I completely changed where I'm going to have my rail yard after that. But the turntable is going to be in the same location. But I cut the hole based on the measurements I found online for what they said the hole needed to be. And as it turns out, the hole that I cut is actually, well, large enough for the thing to drop right through. So now I think I have a solution in mind. Uh, how I'm going to solve that problem, but the first thing I need to do is is build this thing. So that's what I'm going to try to do now is just kind of get the thing built, uh, get it ready to go, and then figure out what it takes to put it in place. So I'm just going to start gradually working through this. This is a long time since I've built a model kit of any kind, uh, quite a few years. So I'm just going to start picking my way through this kit, trying to read the instructions I best I can and uh, see how this goes. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to see how it turns out at the end. Okay, well, I filmed that part before I actually read the instructions or got started on it. 
Once I started reading the instructions, I realized that I probably would be better off to turn this into a tutorial of how to actually build this turntable because these instructions, they're just not very good. And beyond being not very good, they're actually wrong. I've read online where people were frustrated trying to build this thing and if they try to follow these instructions, I can understand why, because a lot of it doesn't make sense. And for much of my life, I have been building things and assembling things for a living. And I've also been writing instructions on how to assemble things for a living. At This instruction set is a fail. So this instruction set consists of the first page of basically history of turntables and what they were used for, which is all wonderful, but it doesn't help you assemble it. The back is a blank page. So the entirety of the instructions are these two pages. And if you go through, there are steps one through 20. So normally following instructions, you start at step one and follow through to step 20. If we look at the instructions for the assembly, so let's see what happens when we try to follow the instructions. And that's what I did. So first of all, of course, I opened all of the packages and made sure that as far as I could tell, all the parts were there. I identified the parts, figure out what was for what. There were all of the plastic pieces on the sprues. There was the main tray or the bottom pit for the turntable. Uh, and then there was a few other items, like a few little screws with nuts, machine screws with nuts. There were a couple of little brass rings, which I figured out what those were for. There was a couple of wiper, copper wipers, like copper strips that are for the electrical contacts onto the brass rings. I'll show you that later. And then there was a length of wire. I don't, don't know, I just, you know, thin wire, so long. So I looked at it, it looked like everything was there. So I thought, let's see if we can follow these instructions and build this turntable. So it says, place the upper bearing, number 21, into the pit. Use a small amount of CA type cement to hold it in place. Okay, so that part is fairly clear. That was just a matter of finding the piece on the sprue, taking the turntable pit, test fitting the part, making sure it fits, gluing it into place. So far, so good. Step one is done. Place the lower bearing 22 into the recess of the mechanism cover. So, where is that? Oh, that's on the drawing on the page on the other side. Mechanism cover at the bottom, another little black ring. Okay, put that in, glued it into place. No real big problem there. Then it says assemble the bogey have 17 and 18 together with the wheels 20 sandwiched in between and turning freely in the cone shaped bearing surfaces. Okay, not a big deal again. Each one of the bogey halves, there's an inside and outside numbered on the sprue, as typical with building models, and the wheels. So what I did was I glued them together, and then I used a couple of little wooden clothes pegs just to hold them together until the glue set. So far, we're doing just well. That's finishing... Oh, no, step number three. And then glue the bogey assemblies to the pockets at the end of the bridge. Again... Not a big deal. I just did that, followed through, and uh, we are now at the end of step number three. So far, so good. Now, place the bridge upside down on your work surface and set the pit upside down on top of it with the bridge shaft going through the hole in the pit. So I did that, and I looked at it. I'm not sure why I did that, because it doesn't follow with the instructions. I now had the pit upside down with a little black shaft sticking out through the middle of it. Okay, that was step number four. That was easy. Step number five, glue the simulated motor housing sides 15 and 16 to the underside of the bridge deck. So the bridge deck is not the bridge that's hidden underneath the pit. The bridge deck is the top part that the rails go on. In, on my kit, it was brown in color. It looks like little wooden ties going across. There's a place to put the rails. And on one side of it, at one end, there's a bit of a protrusion or an extra little platform. There you're supposed to glue the simulated motor housing sides. It's just a couple of little pieces of plastic that are numbered. Not a problem. So I glued them on. 
Then position but do not glue the deck onto the bridge. The bridge is underneath my turntable pit upside down on the table. So now I have to turn it back right side up. And of course the bridge falls out because it's not attached with anything, but that's okay. So I did that. So I'm not sure why I was supposed to turn the pit upside down on top of the bridge because I didn't do with anything with it in that position. So the instructions are a little bit becoming confusing at this point. I flipped it over, took the bridge, put the deck on it, tested it. Yep, it fits. Remove the deck and feed the track power wires between the ties of the deck closest to the center of the deck lengthwise and between the inner guard timbers and the walkway boards. Glue the bridge to the deck and pull the wires all the way out through the deck. There is no drawing at all of what they mean by all of this. None whatsoever. And as I mentioned, there was only one wire in the kit, a longer piece of wire. So this is when I realized that these instructions were going to have to be interpreted loosely and that I was going to need to figure this out myself if I was going to get it done because that set of instructions didn't make any sense. Let's read on. Cut two pieces of rail, not included, I knew that, slightly longer than the bridge. Place the rails on the bridge, overhang equally at the end, but do not glue yet. Mark each rail where it's closest to a wire. Well, here's the thing. The gaps between the ties on that bridge deck are very tight. And yes, you can put a wire through it. I suppose you could attach it to a rail, but it's really hard with a lump of solder on the bottom of the rail, no matter how neatly you solder to get that rail to sit flat on the bottom. So I really decided that I am doing this in a different order. And I think at this point, it would make sense to do a little bit of time travel or a little bit of a quick video edit. And I will jump forward to show you what the end product is supposed to be underneath and how this thing is supposed to electrically work. And then you'll maybe understand what I was getting at and what the end goal was. Because these instructions, without having an idea of what you're supposed to end up with at the end, these instructions are not really going to get you there. And I'll show you that. But let's jump forward for a sec. So this is the turntable almost assembled and ready to go in the layout. The bottom cover still needs to be put in place and screwed on with four screws, but this is a good time to show you how it's actually supposed to work from an electrical standpoint. Now this gear really isn't necessary here other than to hold and hold everything in place. It's kind of a spacer. It's there for um, being the drive gear if you decide to add an electrical drive motor kit to it later. I likely won't be doing that, so it's basically just working as a spacer between these brass rings and the, the bottom of the, the turntable. But from an electrical standpoint, what I have coming in is two wires that will be feeding the power to the track that's in the turntable. They are connected, um, soldered, to these two copper strips, which are kind of the, the wipers, I guess you want to call them. And uh, those wipers are screwed to this plastic piece that's glued to the turntable. Now, in the instructions, it tells you to loop the wires and just tighten them under these two nuts. I decided to do that because I was, I decided not to do that because I was concerned that the wire being under those nuts might make the nuts work loose and then not hold these wipers in place securely. So instead, I soldered the wires to the other side tighten these screws up nice and snug and actually put a little bit of super glue on the other side so to make sure that these wipers don't rotate in their position and short out. I also put some electrical tape, it happens to be white, color doesn't matter, but I had some white electrical tape I just put around them to try to prevent any accidental shorts as well. And these copper wires, what they do then is they make contact with these two brass rings um, and those brass rings are connected by wires inside this shaft that go up and are soldered to the bottom of the rails on the other side of the turntable. And that's the part that's important to understand when you're assembling this thing. The instructions at the beginning are not very clear about where the wires go uh, from either end. And that's the part that could, I guess, confuse you if you're not following through very carefully or if you're not understanding the whole picture. 
And if you can see in this bottom of this shaft, there's a little bit of a notch here. That's actually an open slot that goes all the way up the shaft and that's open to the inside of the, the structure in underneath the tracks. So the wi wires that are soldered to these brass rings actually go up through that slot and I'll come up underneath the tracks and then, are then those are the wires that are soldered to the bottom of the rail. So that's how the electrical connection gets in. It comes through these wires, through these copper wipers, through these brass rings, through the wires that are soldered to the brass rings, go up to the rails. The other end of those wires is soldered to the rails. That whole sequence of, or that, that path for the power is the part that's important to get and to understand when you're assembling this thing and the instructions are not very clear on that part. Anyway, let's go back to the assembly procedure. Okay, so now you know what is supposed to be the end product underneath the turntable. And that bit of shaft that you saw sticking up through the bottom of the pit, that that's what goes on the bottom of it once the thing is done. So what we actually need to do, whatever these instructions say, is we need to be able to assemble this thing in such a way that we have a wire soldered to the bottom of each rail. Those rails need to be glued in place. The under, other ends of those wires need to be soldered to the inside of those brass rings which are firmly located on that shaft at the bottom because those are the electrical supply for the rails. So that's the end goal. So let's see how we can get there because these instructions aren't getting us there. So what I decided to do was, okay, I did follow some of the instructions. I put the little um, motor housing sides to the bottom of the bridge deck. That's okay, they didn't get in the way. I glued those on. I cut the two pieces of rail to be just slightly longer of the deck. No problem with that. Then I found about the center point of the rail and I soldered wires to the rail as cleanly as I could. What I did was I just kind of roughed it up with the Dremel on the bottom and put some soldering flux on it, tinned both of the rails, soldered the wires onto it. What I then did was I actually cut a few little pieces of tie out from underneath the rails exactly where the wires are going down to give me clearance for the little, the end of the wire and the solder so the rail would sit flat across the entire bridge deck. I thought that kind of made sense to do it that way. I then fed the wires through those holes with the rails laying loosely on top of the bridge deck. Continued to feed the wires through the bottom part of the bridge and out through the slot in the bottom of the shaft so that the wires, the other end of those wires were protruding through the bottom of the other end of that shaft. Once I had them in place, I'd used a little bit of the green painter's tape to just loosely hold the rails on top of the deck. And I also wrapped some around the bottom of the shaft so the wires wouldn't accidentally get pulled inside. Then I glued the bridge deck to the bridge because before I glued the rails to the deck, I wanted that deck to be held flat. And if I just tried gluing to the rails to the bridge, to the deck without it being attached to the bridge, I was worried that I could end up with a little bit of a curve up or down and that wouldn't make the turntable work very well when I was done. So what I did at that point with the rails kind of loosely on the one side, the wires hanging out the shaft on the other end, I glued the bridge deck to the bridge. Now, there is something in the instructions that is mentioned and I noticed, and it, this is important, uh, on the side of the the bridge itself at one end you will see a couple of holes the the end with those little holes in the side are the ones that is the end that goes underneath your little engine cover that you've put on or that little extra platform that's sticking out of the bridge deck so make sure you put the deck onto the bridge the right way around it will fit either way the problem is you need those little mounting holes later in the procedure once i had the bridge deck glued to the bridge and the glue had set so that I knew it wasn't going to move, I then proceeded to glue the rails in place. Now there are little tabs on both sides. Just make sure you figure out exactly the width where they need to go. Use an, if you don't have a 
proper rail gauge. Just use a set of wheels off of a train car, or I used a little a truck off of a very train car and put it on there just to figure out the exact location. And once you figure it out, it's pretty obvious. There are grooves for the rails to sit in, and there are little bumps on both the inside and the outside of the rail to keep it exactly where it needs to go. So what I did was I clamped it in place starting from the middle just on both sides of where my wire went through clamped it in made sure it was nice and vertical and solid and located where I wanted and then I dribbled a little bit of super glue CA into along the edges of the rail so it would seep underneath and glue that in place I let that sit for a while to make sure that it set and then I worked my clamps outward from the center of the bridge on each rail individually and did the same thing, just made sure I centered it until I got all the way to the end. Each time, just dribbling a few drops of glue at each one of the, the points where it made contact with the rail to make sure that the rail was good and glued in place. Did that with both rails. And then after that, I turned around and got the Dremel with a cutting disc and trimmed the ends of the rails that were protruding so that they would match the end edge of uh, the end of the bridge. At this point I ended up following the instructions again which I probably shouldn't have. So at this point uh, in step nine after it tells you to cut the rails which I've done even though I fo didn't follow everything up to there it tells you to assemble the cab and, and glue that to the deck. My advice is, even though I did that, leave that till the end. There's no reason not to leave the cab and all the railings above the thing to be done after everything else is assembled. You're much less likely to break them, and when you're turning it upside down, you don't have to worry about breaking them or crushing them. As it was, because I put the cab on there, I had to do the rest of the work with the uh, turntable upside down on top of a couple blocks of wood, so that the little cab wouldn't get crushed. So if I was going to do it again, I wouldn't put the cab on until I was done everything else. But that's just an aside. So in number 10, 9, it says assemble the cab. Number 10, it says assemble the power arch. And then it's number 11, it says glue the handrails on it. I wouldn't do any of those until I was done the whole thing because they're just going to be sticking out the other side when you're working on it and likely to break. Glue the simulated turntable drive support into the holes in the bridge side and follow that. Okay, definitely I would do that at this point because it's going to be in the turntable pit and protected and it would be more awkward to glue that into place after you're done. So I would go and do number step number 12 on my page next. Step 13, place the metal washer onto the shaft. Ah, so what this means is this is where we take the bridge and put it back into the turntable pit. Turn the whole thing upside down, even though the instructions don't tell you that. It says remove the big gear from the sprue and place it on the shaft as far as it will go on top of the washer. Okay, I did that. That's okay. Glued it in place. After this step though, you have to remember you can't take it apart again. Once that gear is in place, the two parts, the bridge and the turntable pit are not coming apart. Step number 14. Cut two pieces of wire about five inches long. Why? If I had followed the earlier instructions, it told me to solder wires onto the rails. So by the earlier instructions, wires are already soldered onto the rails, except that in the early instructions, it doesn't even tell me to pass those wires through the bottom of the shaft. It tells me to put them in the middle of the bridge somewhere, but it doesn't tell me to pass them out through the slot in the bottom of the shaft. Fortunately, I figured that out before I glued it all together, and so I had wires coming through the bottom of the shaft and accessible. The instructions don't actually tell you to do that. Instead, it tells you to cut two pieces of wire about five inches long. Strip about a quarter inch of insulation from each end. Solder the free end of one of the wires to the inner surface of the brass tube, 35. Repeat with other wire and tube. Okay, that's interesting. Slip one of the tubes on the bridge shaft, feeding the wire into the slot and through the shaft. Here's the problem. It tells you to feed it through the slot and into the shaft, but you've already grew the deck onto the bridge on the other side with wires hanging down from it, how are you connecting those wires together? Because they are completely inaccessible. This is where the instructions fall apart completely. Fortunately, I didn't follow the instructions. Instead, I had wires protruding at the bottom of the shaft and I was able to just solder the brass rings onto those. Now, one thing to remember is there are two wires, there are two brass rings. And in as I showed you in my flash forward, 
those two rings need to be mounted on top of the shaft. And what you have to do is you have to choose the, the two wires will be coming up through the slot and one is closer to the outside of the shaft, one's closer to the inside. Take the ones that's closer to the outside first, solder it to the inside of the brass ring as cleanly as you can, and then take the other wire, pass it through the ring, slide that ring over the shaft with the other wire sticking straight up. Next step, very important, because if you don't do this, it's not going to work. There is a little black insulator ring, number 28. Take that, pass the top wire through that ring and set that little ring on top of the brass ring you just put in place. Now you can take the second brass ring, solder the wire into that, and then feed the wire down inside, push the excess wire into the shaft inside, and it should all fit together. Now it is going to be a tight fit to push all this down, but that way it works. If you choose the wrong wire to solder it onto on the first ring, what happens is the wires are trying to cross in that slot when you go to put the second one on and there isn't enough room to wire to cross the wires and still be able to push them down inside. So make sure the bottom ring is connected to the outer wire and the inner wire continues up to the top ring when the, when the turntable is upside down. So in the next step it says, Using the machine screws, attach the electrical wipers to piece 26. Do not tighten the nuts yet. Temporarily place the piece 26 in the position to see if the wipers must be bent to make contact with the brass tubes. So what I found was I just glued that thing into place and then screwed the wipers on using the little machine screws and the nuts and I tightened them up. What I did do was put a little bit of electrical tape as recommended in here to make sure that they don't short together. And then instead of, as they mentioned in the next instruction of loosening one of the nuts and wrapping the wire under the nuts, I left those nuts nice and tight and I soldered the wires to them as I showed in that earlier flash or forward video. I wanted to make sure it's a good contact and I don't want those wipers to move. What I did actually for the wires to go out is I drilled a couple of holes inside in the side of that box to give a nice clear path for the wires to come out rather than being pinched somewhere else because I couldn't see a good place to put them that were not going to be a problem. Then the final step was to screw the cover on and place the turntable on my layout. I still have to put the handrails on the turntable, but that's okay. I did put the arch on the top. I have the little cab on there. The handrails can wait until I get all the electrical connections done. Regarding what I mentioned about the hole in my bench work being too large, so the hole wasn't large by too much. So what I did was I cut back the cork on the bench work a little bit to create maybe a three eighths of an inch strip all the way around. And then I glued some cork vertically to the inside of the hole to make the hole a little bit smaller. And then I glued a new strip of cork around the top that I cut carefully to be the exact size for the turntable. So at this point, I have the turntable positioned on the deck and I think it's going to work just fine. The next thing I need to do is run the track work to it and connect all the power wires and get it working. Um, regarding the quality of the turntable, it isn't exactly a super solid thing. It is a, the pit is a big plastic bowl, so there is a little bit of flex to that. Uh, but I think it'll work fine for my purposes. I have no idea how the powered versions would work, but I'm okay with it the way it is. But the instructions are definitely not great. So just remember, if you're building it, don't trap yourself. Uh, in hindsight, you could start from the bottom or start from the top, but if you solder wires to the rails, make sure that you have them pass through the slot in the bottom of the shaft all the way through before you assemble everything else. Because once you glue that bridge onto the deck, it's almost impossible to access the inside of that shaft to get at the wires to pull them through or push them through or anything. Similarly, once your deck is glued on, there's no way you're going to be able to pass wires up to glue them onto the rails anymore very well. So try to get all the wires through before you glue it all together and it should go together a little bit better. I think the problem is that people start following these instructions without a full clear picture of what the end result needs to be. And as a result, 
they get themselves trapped with wires going who knows where. Anyway, hopefully this is helpful for somebody. It's a lot longer than I intended this video to be, but I really didn't know how to cover it in any other way because the instructions are a, are a fail. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, click the like and subscribe to see more. Hopefully the other ones aren't quite as long as this is turning out to be, but you know what? If it's helping somebody, great. And see you next time.